Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a great day. We're taking a bit of a break when it comes to the Steam Deck content, and I asked the Turk Force over at the Community tab what you guys wanted to talk about this week. And sure enough, you guys voted and want to hear my opinions on 4K gaming. Well, let's get straight to it. I think it sucks. Now don't get me wrong guys, I love seeing new graphics cards hit the market. I'm always impressed by their raw horsepower as well as the bells and whistles that come with the latest generations of tech. However, there are a couple of different marketing gimmicks that I think are being you know, shown a little too much light. One of those is definitely going to be 4K gaming. 4K is a resolution that measures in at about 3840 pixels on the bottom and 2160 pixels going to the top, and that's going to be Ultra HD or UHD. When you do the math and multiply it, and you're going to get around around 8.3 megapixels, and when you compare that to 1080p or Full HD, measuring in at, of course, 1920 by 1080, 4K actually gives you about four times as many pixels in a given screen size compared to the standard 1080p. And when you put the two pictures side by side, it's pretty easy to see just how clear Ultra HD can look, and it's actually pretty stunning. Let's roll a few clips and see what we can tell the difference. Now on the left, we have our 1080p clip, which looks like a standard uh, 1080p YouTube video. And on the right, we have our 4K video clip, and I'm trying to match the same character sizes because if you've got two monitors that are, you know, 23 inches uh, diagonally for both 1080p and 4K, this is going to be kind of similar to what you'll see in that type of experience. But one thing to keep in mind is if you're looking over at the right at the 4K image, you do notice some finer details when it comes to, you know, the textures, some of the different lines that are coming out. So clearly 4K is a very uh, detail oriented resolution and it provides a lot more clarity and definition to an image compared to full HD or 1080p. Now let's take a look at the 4K video clip at its native resolution. And turns out it's practically a two times digital zoom compared to our 1080p clip from earlier. Now what you'll notice here is that each of the individual pixels actually has a lot of information and helps define the particular edges that we were seeing from the previous clip, such as the finer edges in the hair or the textures or any of the different foliage. With the 4K image, each of these little objects on the screen gets that much additional information, which in turn gives us a much clearer image as we zoom out back to our normal video. So this all sounds great, right? Well, once you start digging into the details, that's when we start to say that 4K really does suck. Now the obvious issue here with 4K is the amount of sheer horsepower that's required in order to drive our 4K displays. Now I'm going to be using a lot of the data from Hardware Unboxed, I'll post a link to his video down below, in order to get a good gauge of, you know, the kind of graphics card performance that we need in 4K. Now if you're going to be playing older games or using lower, you know, detail settings like medium or low, Chances are you could probably get away with an RX 5700 XT GPU. It's a really good 1440p card, and to be honest, you could probably get away with some pretty decent 4K gaming. But if you're wanting to get a maintained lock 60 FPS at 4K in the latest AAA games, you're going to need at least an RTX 3080 in order to get to that threshold. To most gamers, that is a steep hurdle to climb, and to be honest, that requires a lot of scratch that's just not going to be worth it. One decent alternative that gamers have been going to lately is 1440p. It does offer about 34% more pixels when compared to 1080p, yet only sacrifices about half of the quality that 4K would offer. It's a great balance between the increased clarity as well as maintaining the performance that we get from 1080p without having to splurge on extravagant hardware and it's much more achievable for most gamers. As always, you could decrease your detail quality settings inside of your game, but if you're going to be gaming at 4K, you're kind of being counterproductive there because as you go from ultra to high to medium, you're reducing those detail settings, which is the entire point of running at 4K, getting that extra clarity in your textures, your hair, and all that other stuff. Reducing your detail settings is just going to be, you know, a missed opportunity for extra immersion. 
And let's not forget with these latest generations of GPUs, we have access to features such as upscaling like DLSS and FSR. And now we've talked about both of these technologies in the past here on the channel, but the TLDR here is by reducing your render resolution and upscaling to the 4K resolution, you do reduce your graphical quality compared to native by a little bit, but you could also be introducing some, you know, fuzziness to your image. Now the GPU is only half of the equation. We also have to keep in mind the monitor. Now lucky for us, the 4K display TVs that we get in the living room, they have driven down the manufacturing costs of those types of panels, but many gamers are still sticking to their trusty 1080p uh, monitors in order to get you know faster refresh rates and of course saving a bit of money. Now 1080p gaming monitors you can usually find those between 150 bucks to maybe 250, 300 bucks and if you're going with 1440p those can usually be found for right around you know 175 all the way up to 400 dollars. But when it comes to 4k gaming monitors those can be pretty dang expensive. You can expect to pay anywhere between $450 up to $1,000 for a decent gaming monitor. Of course, you can find 4K displays like this LG one I've got behind me. You know, it's 4K 60, but its response times are terrible. It always tears whenever I'm playing games on it, but the colors do look pretty good. So now that we know uh, the types of graphics cards we need and the monitor costs, let's go through a few different mock builds and see what kind of uh, PCs we need to build in order to enjoy the different experiences. Now for 1080p, when I look at all of the hardware on box data, I felt comfortable with saying we can guarantee a 60 FPS experience with most, if not all of the latest games with an RTX 3060. Now you can always opt for an RX 6600 here or the 6600 XT, but I felt that the 3060 was a decent option. You get the DLSS, you also get uh, Nvidia's second generation of ray tracing. Now, when it comes to the graphics cards cost, you know, I don't want to get into the minutia of the current market that we're living in. So I'm going to be sticking with just the MSRP as reported from Nvidia. So right at $330, it's a pretty decent budget gaming GPU. Now going into the 1440p experience, again, same base computer as before, but this time we're going to be going with the RX 6700 XT. Now we've bumped it up from the 5700 that we talked about earlier in the video, and for most games at 1440p, we're able to get, you know, right above 70 FPS at the bare minimum, and that's according to Hardware on Boxes data. So there's a little bit of wiggle room if you're going to go with a uh, variable refresh rate monitor or if you want to turn on any additional features onto the GPU. Now that card's MSRP is going to be coming in right around $480 and I've seen them on eBay as much as like $950. So uh, I'm hoping that you guys are patient and can find them on uh, the new egg shuffle or some other way because it's a really expensive GPU, but comparing that to the 1080p experience, it's not that bad when comparing MSRP. Now lastly, at 4K, this is the RTX 3080, which at the MSRP looks pretty good. It's right at around $680, but if you go over to eBay, guys, these things are going anywhere between you know, $1,200 all the way up to like $1,600, depending on if it's the LHR equipped version or what kind of other coolers are on it. So. At MSRP, it looks okay, but for the added benefit and the clarity that comes with 4K, I would honestly stick with the 6700 XT grade card or maybe go with the 3070 and just stick with 1440p because it's a more accessible option and it provides, in my opinion, a pretty decent or a pretty similar experience. So lastly, and this is probably a detail that gets overlooked by many gamers out there, and that's just what kind of perceived quality improvement do we get from going from 1080p all the way up to 4K? As we saw in our Doom Eternal RTX enabled video, when you turn ray tracing on and you're ripping and tearing through the game, since it's so fast paced, it's really difficult to actually see how ray tracing impacts the quality of the gameplay with Doom Eternal, and the same can be said about 4K. Sure, if you're playing a cinematic game such as Metro Exodus or Control, maybe that increase in resolution is a really good benefit and it actually would enhance your experience. But, you know, if you're playing like Call of Duty at 4K versus Call of Duty at 1440p, I could probably bet you a few bucks there that you're not going to tell the difference. And especially when you're, you know, in the middle of a gunfight, you're going to be so tunnel visioned into the center of the screen or in the immediate periphery 
that, you know, you're not going to be able to tell the difference in the foliage and if there's like extra cracks in the fence line, right? It's, it's that kind of detail just gets lost in the bigger, grander scheme of things. I think there's some bigger improvements that we can turn on that might be a better fit for most gamers. But there's another feature that I have been talking about here on the channel. Not a lot of y'all have jumped on the bandwagon just yet, but that is ray tracing. Now, if you're going to be going 4K with ray tracing en enabled, you're going to need at least an RTX 3080 with upscaling enabled in some of these latest AAA games because that kind of hardware is just really hard to drive that level of uh, increases in the pixel counts and quality. And going down to 1440p, ray tracing actually becomes a pretty a uh, decent offering, and if you have the headroom for it, if you turn on ray tracing, you might be able to stay right at 60. And what I would beg to argue, and I've got a couple of different screenshots here, is that the impact from ray tracing is much more beneficial than the impact that comes from increased pixel count. As we saw at the very beginning of the video, sure, there's a little bit of extra clarity going from 1080p up to 4K, but when you're sitting at 1440p with ray tracing off, versus ray tracing turned on, this is Battlefield 2042 with uh, ray traced ambient occlusion, the ray traced scene just looks so much more vibrant and immersive, it doesn't look as flat as just the native experience. And when you're playing the game, you actually get to feel that immersion a little bit more instead of the you know finer details you might be getting from 4K. But keep in mind though, ray tracing is super expensive and I totally own up to that, but I would say that the performance loss at 1440p might be more uh, acceptable than the performance loss of ray tracing at 4K. Again, at the Battlefield example here, I can play on my 6800 XT here at right around 70-ish FPS, but as soon as I turn on ray tracing, thunk, down to 45, and it is not enjoyable, especially for a fast-paced shooter. Now, I wouldn't say I hate 4K. It's a great resolution and it has its place when it comes to video, watching TV, uh, content creation, video editing, like I got back here in the background, and heck, even just standard desktop operation. 4K is awesome and having the extra screen real estate is always a benefit for anyone that's needing to multitask. But when it comes to gamers, you know, gamers love to have frames and at 4K, the cost to get those additional frames is just way too much. We're better suited to lower resolutions in order to get higher refresh rate monitors and have a more immersive experience without having to drain our wallet. Because let's be honest, guys, a lot of these graphics cards are really expensive these days and gaming at 4K is really just a pipe dream for most of us. So guys, that's why I think 4K sucks. There's plenty of better options out there. 1440p is my go-to monitor. What do y'all like to game at? Let me know down in the comments. Hit the subscribe button because we've got all sorts of cool videos coming. We've got a 6700 XT review. We're finally going to look at our MSI Delta 15 laptop. And even more impressive, we've got Intel 12th Gen just waiting to be open. So get subscribed, hit the bell icon. We're going to have a good time. So Turk Force, appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next week.